Hello my lovelies and welcome back to a kooky corner of YouTube where we investigate all things arty. Um, today as promised last week I am going to go through um, a creation of needle felting. So it's 2D needle felting based on your artwork or just an idea that you might have had jotted down in your sketchbook. I have already made this piece so that I could show you before we have a go. Um, these are some of my lollipop flowers that I've really enjoyed making. Um, there's a video on these um, further back this month in one of my videos so if you want to have a look at that have a check out of that. Um, so these were my inspiration for the piece of flat needle felting and embroidery that I have done here. So not copying completely but I could have if I wanted to but because I kind of like to develop an idea I have produced this piece. Uh, which is a piece of, as I say, flat needle felting and uh, embroidery in order to put my lollipop flowers into a different format. It's really simple. It's not a hard process. It's just basic needle felting. You don't need a, uh, an embellishing machine or anything like that. All you need is a piece of wool blend felt as your starter piece and a variation of different um, wool fleece, sorry about that, a variation of different wool fleece in order to create your flower decorations. Once your basic needle felting part is done then the embroidery part takes over and none of these are hard or difficult to do, really simple and I'll take you through each one. You can see though how much a piece of felt does shrink when you are needle felting into it. So this is the size that this one was. I've cut them both the same size and it does do a slight shrinkage. So let's put it on. Not a great deal. It's probably about half a centimetre on either side thereabouts. So it's not a great deal but it's just something to bear in mind. Um, because I think I cut these just slightly bigger than postcard size so that they would be thereabouts postcard size when I finished and I think I kind of achieved that. So just something to bear in mind if you were wanting an exact size piece. So what I did was I initially got my felt. This is kind of like a dark base felt. Base your felt colour on what kind of a background you want to be working with. So I was working with like blues and very dark indigos and some lighter blues but my basis was blue. So I took this one um, as my ba base felt which we're going to felt into. Um, we do create a background on, on that and then add in the flower details after that. But this is the startings of it. So you will need your piece of wool blend felt. This is a 70-30 wool acrylic blend. Uh, you could do this into pure wool back, background if you wanted to, but as I'm putting pure wool on the top of it, uh, this is just a saving that I'll make in order to do it on this because it's a little cheaper to do it on here than it is on your pure wool felt. You will need um, felting needles so I will go and grab those, come back and I'll show you what you're going to need. Okay so this is my felting tray. I try and keep everything in here um, that I'm going to need for making my pieces. Um, so in here we've got the pen needle which has got three three needles in it. That's a useful one for this size because you can get more detail with that. When you are doing your background I suggest you go with one of these 
which is a five needle oh, it wasn't locked five needles in there and that will just make it go quicker basically it's just a quicker uh, way of getting a background down and recommended for that if you haven't got either any of those uh, singular needles will do it will just take you a little bit longer that's all it doesn't really matter if you've got five three or one it's just the timing that it will take in order to get your piece felted um, so the more needles you've got to get your background done the better uh, the quicker not necessarily better it is quicker okay so it's timing things that you need to consider you want to get something done a little bit quicker so you can get onto the embroidery part go for your five needle or your three needle piece um, it might be advisable to have a singular needle so if you have got a singular needle for just for little details if you wanted to quickly just I don't know, say something was stuck out and you just wanted to pull it in and, and make sure it was needle felted down then the singular needle is always handy to have and I always have them hanging around on my desk anyway um, so that's your basics um, the other thing you're going to need is wool and so I'm going to grab out some of the colours that I'm going to use for this and I'll show you how we go about getting a base background fabric for us to put our flowers and embroidery on. So I've grabbed out some of, of my selection of blue um, wool. This is, let me have a little look, it is literally just a merino merino wool tops um, in different varying colours um, of blue and in this case a little bit of black as well to give me that really dark indigo look that I got in this piece here. There's lots of different bits in the background. Uh, I have also got my bit box which Christopher is sitting on top of so let me just move Christopher. Say hi Chris. Here he is. He's sitting on top of my sewing threads and my little bit box of fabrics. This is where I put all my scraps. So I've got little scraps of felt. Never throw anything away. As I said, I am a womble. So throwing something away would be a no-no. <laughs> you never know when that tiny little bit will come in handy. So I also got little bits like this that might give some kind of interest as well um, but I'm just going to play with it as I suggest you all do just a little play around with your um, wool see what you've got okay pop that to one side I have got my needle felting mat which is by clover this is the larger one of the two they do two different sizes they do a smaller one this and this size which is a little bit bigger and just probably just the right size for our piece obviously you're going to have to reposition it but you need to take it off at certain points to get rid of um not to get rid of but just to pull it away to pull it free from the bristles um so yeah so the first thing i'm going to do position it centrally because i want to see where i'm going to lay out my pieces so to start off with, I'm going to start, actually I've got a little bit of this as well, which went in nicely. So to pull apart your fibres, you want to kind of separate it out a little bit because it comes in like a, a, a coil, should I say. So you want to separate it out. We're not going to use all of this. We're not going to use very much at all of either one. And literally, gently pull apart. If you try and pull them apart, pulling really hard like that let me show you if I try and do that that's not going to shift they just lock into each other even tighter so what you need to do is separate them out gently put some pressure on either side doing it slowly and it separates out into a nice piece that you can use so I'm going to take a few bits off of either of these pieces and any that I have left over will go straight back into my bit box. I'll pull that bit off there. 
and this lighter blue is quite nice to have in as well although I have got some in my bit box here that I could use so let me pull some of that out rather than it's a little bit lighter than the one I've got here but that will do for the amount that I actually need and then this one's quite a nice one so oh, I've got some of that yeah I've got some of that this is the darker one this is more of a midnighty navy blue That's there and some black some of this I always uncoil the wrong end do you find that as well when you want to uncoil something it's always the wrong end that you grab hold of <laughs> it's a natural trait that I have I'm always able to find the wrong end of things <laughs> I'm going to pop all these back in my bag. This wool, by the way, is from um, Wool, World of Wool, and they do bag selections of different colours. So if you wanted to try a few different ones, I would suggest go and grab one of their bags. You can also have a selection of where you pick your own, um, pick your own selection. So you can select whichever ones you wanted. Okay, let me pop that to one side. That's what I use when I'm doing 3D pieces so that it doesn't all go into the needles. So take that away. Okay, so my first bit is going to go down the bottom here. I'm just going to gently lay it across the base. This is why we use a base that matches the colour of your fabrics that you're going to use because if there are little bits it's not going to show through if you see what I mean. If you have, um, if your needle felted that in it wouldn't look bad because you've still got a blue background and then you could just build on it. Um, it's a bit more of this. Actually, no, let's go with this one. This is a bit like the collage where you can pick and choose where you want pieces to go before you actually start to lay them down. And where's that blue again? With this as well, you can take it in different ways. You don't have to go the same way. I've got bits of, <laughs> I've got bits of floof flying everywhere. Um, this is a Corridale. This is a bit that I had in my bit box. So I'm going to pop some of that on as well. And oh, where should I put a little bit down there? Like that. So you can see we're just building up some layers onto our base. And you're just applying them where you think you want them to go. This again is manoeuvre aroundable. You can change where things are as you go along. I have got a little bit of this in mind somewhere, so that's going in as well. we'll bang a bit of that in. <laughs> Technical term that. And I had some of this nice turquoise one, which just adds a little bit of something. You can get part of it that you actually like. I like this bit here. So again, same principles of trying to separate it out. Gentle pulling until it separates. So I'm going to have a bit of that. I'm going to put that over in the top corner. I'm going to balance it out a little bit down here, having some there. Okay, so I'm going to say, you can see I didn't really use hardly any of the, the the wool I pulled out, so it really is economical. You don't use a lot to start off with. Do not worry about it going over the edge. That's something we can sort out as we go along. Helps if you take the lock off. And all I'm going to do now is spend a few happy moments locking this down, felting it down into the base fabric. Felting. 
melting down what we have so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop here I'm going to let you have a go felt down your fibers and we'll come back here when we've gone a little way along to see if we can find any gaps that we might want to fill with something then this part will be done me again also suggesting that just move around your piece occasionally otherwise you'll be going off of your felting base so once you've got a bit down move it along and that also gives it a chance to release itself from the uh, bristles underneath it's not really truly stuck down it's just nicer if you can move it easier okay carry on okay so I've needle felted this down to a stage where we can have a look at it and see where we're going I clearly I've just gone quite mad and just added in all kinds of background colors to this because I want it to be fairly vibrant -y. you're going to cover up a major part of it so I wanted it to kind of just still stand out um, but you could do gradients along you don't have to go as wild as I have done with this one um, you can see look it's shrinking down already can you see because this one was smaller and this is what happens it just kind of pushes in so but I'm quite happy with that for now um, what I'm going to do now, because these bits of floofiness are getting in my way, what I do with these is I just trim them off. If you've got a little bit dangling over the edge there and you can just pull it in and just felt it on, that's fine. Um, but I've got quite major floofage going on at this side. Major floofage, technical term. Um, <laughs> So I'm just going to trim off this. I could fold it in and do it on the other side. The only problem with that is, can you see, on the back of here, you can tell how it's felted in because all the colours have migrated through to the back. Um, so if you fold it in and redo it on this side, that means it's going to come back through on this side. Just remember that. <laughs> so my preferred method is just to give it a quick haircut. And these bits never go to waste, apart from these tiny little bits here. I do put them back into my bit box to reuse. So if I've got some little bits of floofage that are worth keeping, I just stick them back in the bit box. So this gives us a clearer perspective of what we have on our base. And get rid of these fluffy bits before they blow everywhere. I have the windows open because it is boiling hot in the studio today. Uh, these bits aren't worth keeping so I'll just pop those in my little bin and have a quick wipe down because I like a, a nice clear deck for this. Okay pop that over there. So we can see what we've got, we can see if we've got any major gappage going on. I don't see any on this, there's maybe a little bit on that top edge but I'm not going to worry about that too much. Um, I can always add things in if there are any major loose bits going on. Just give it another one so with your needles. Um, I think we're all okay there's a bit hanging off there I'm just going to pull that back in you see I just literally just folded it back in make sure your fingers are well out of the way when you are doing this bit you do not want those needles to go through your fingers believe me oh no 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 you don't it is painful from a person who knows <laughs> okay so background complete background level done um, what we're going to do is I'm going to then have a look at how we do the placement of where your flowers want to be and then I'm going to split this into two parts so on my Friday video we're going to go into the embroidery part of this and the detailing so this bit is going to be background piece which we've done we're going to do the flower placement and basically where we're going to put the leaves 
and then on Friday we'll do the embroidery embellishment part okay so let's go back into the bit box what I'm wanting is some pieces for the middles of my flowers this is where your bit box comes into its own I quite like that I'm just gonna go through and pick out some bits ooh interesting that's from some um, pre felt uh, also you can for, for the leaves I'm going to suggest you just get some flat felt and just cut out some leaf shapes you can do that that is the thing we can do um, quite like that yellow don't need all those little bits around it let's clear those off you do not need much of this it's really really so good for not eating into everything that you have. I might actually use that as one of my flower bases because I quite like that. That's a nice bit of green. Let's have some of that out as well. So we're going to use some of that in our piece. And there's a bit more pastel-y colours there. Hmm, let's have those. I think this bit can go back in its bag. It's a big bit that didn't need to be in the box. And a bit of pink. Pink will be nice. That lilac y colour is also nice. I'm not saying I'm going to use all of these, I'm just dragging them out. That purple. and I think a little bit of that as well okay we've, ooh, haha I like that I love that okay so we've delved into our bit box when I do mine I try and have something at the forefront that's going to be like the focus and I try and not position it in the middle I try not to position anything slap bang in the middle of a piece um, because I want the eye to be able to travel around a, ple a place and, and rest on places. If you look at my embellishment, I've picked out a couple of them. That one especially has had, it's gone to town on that one because that's going to be the main feature of my piece. So I've given it everything. Um, other things have got like little French knots and you've got a few sequins dotted around, but that is the main piece. So that's got a lot of the attention. I've added detail into other pieces, but you do need little places where I can rest in between times before it goes on to different places. Just a little bit of um, background setting information there. So I think my main flower at the front, I had a piece of mustard which I've used up and so we're going to go with this yellow I think because it's quite bright and pretty. I'm vaguely forming this into a circle. <laughs> I do a lot of vague circles on this on this channel. <laughs> uh, trying to see how big I want it to be. I'm gonna tuck it in there. Now I've got a little bit left over so that I can add into it. I've got some bare spots. So I'm gonna pl plop that there for now. I'm not gonna felt it down just yet. So I'm going to see if I can position some things before I do that. Um, got a nice bit of this red here. I'm going to pop that. It's a smaller circle. So this won't especially form circles because it's a corridor. You can see it's a lot coarser than the merino. That's a good way of seeing the differences between them. Um, just to be awkward, I'm going to cut myself a circle out of this. Another vague circle. <laughs> I do love my vague circles. So cutting a little circle out of some felt there. I can go on that bit. I have a little bit of pink. 
go up into that top spot there and my final flower really got any turquoise and I don't really want turquoise on turquoise so I'm gonna go I'm gonna go with a different color so I'm gonna go with this um, lilac-y color or do I want to go purple hmm choices choices let's go with this let's go with this so this is going to be the last one of my five flower set okay This is where a singular needle might come in. So it's just to get some kind of a... Just getting it down into place. You can kind of drag it in place. Do not bend that needle too much though or it will snap. Quick warning on that one. Uh, that one's going to go about there. So you'll see your felt your already made felt will still felt in to your background. So if you've got any like bits of random bits of felt, don't throw them away. Don't forget our womble brain. We've got to keep that <laughs> and make it into something else. <laughs> I'm not gonna sing you the womble song, I promise. Okay. So that's vaguely felted into place. This needs to be a little bit smaller. I'm just ripping a few bits off there. Make that into a smaller circle. Just to vaguely blend in there. About there-ish. Vague circle. And finally, on the prep bit, just a tiny little pink circle up in the top corner. Uh, I'm actually ripping it out and moving it along a bit. I don't want it to be in lines especially, I want that one to be further that way. And, uh, there. Kind of getting it into a vaguey, circly shape. Okay. Once you've got your things in place, come in with your big boy needles and give that a good bashing down. Making sure just to move things back in if they start to go astray. And you can see that's migrating through to the other side. You can see that, see the colors on that. That's going through, so that's all well and good. And this one to be a little bit more careful because it just sometimes gets stuck on the needles and you have to retrieve it. It's already cut into a circle shape, so I don't have to worry about pulling bits in. You can see that has already migrated through. That will work with any kind of felt, so if you've got um, um, wool blend mix if you've got a wool felt a pure wool felt or if you've got an acrylic felt you can still use it for your needle felting okay this is always the one that's a bit unruly <laughs> what you can do is kind of just floof it out a bit Make sure you've got your fake circle going on to the centre of your flower. Okay, this one's also quite unruly, so let's let's get this one into shape. Putting the bits back in, keeping it out of the way of the needles. You can actually use these if you want to. I've got mine stuck on there. It's a finger protector. It'll, you know, you can hold it down and, and do that. Or alternatively, hold it down with a single thing there. So you can keep keep hold on it. So either one of those methods works. Okay. 
last one just lifted it up again just to get rid of um to get to release it from its uh, fibers underneath I need a little, little tad, tad more, just in that corner, to get the full, the full Monty. <laughs> so you can add in, if you've got any gaps, if you don't like the gaps, add in some fibres. So we have our basic circles down. What you can do now as well is add in a contrasting colour into the centre which I have done on all of these so for my yellow one I'm going to go with a little bit of this red and I really do mean a little bit okay <laughs> so position gently gently bently getting that into place you can actually do this with your singular needle I'm going to give it a, a floof there, so that's all down. Uh, this bottom one has got some purple in it, so I'm going to stick with the plan. A little bit of purple, gently, gently in, shaping it in, and bring in the big boy. If you accidentally get in a place you don't want it to, you can literally just pull it out. That is something you can do and then just cover it over with something else. This one's got a little bit of yellow. So I'm going to get a little bit of yellow. It's not quite as bright as the one on my original, but I'm quite liking it. I like, I like this uh, pale yellow. I can't get quite enough small that will do me uh, okay so let's get you in gently to start off with so that you can reposition where your center circle goes and then in with the big boy you could even use your pen tool for this one and just get that one in place and this one, because it has uh, purple, I'm going to go with a little bit of this blue. It's a brighter blue. So, vague circle. Just going in with a pen tool here. Get my centre in. And then this last little pink. It's going to have some purple in the middle of it there. The pen tool. And there we have the first bit all done. So you've got your background. You've got your main flower circles all in place. I'm going to leave it there for now and then I'm going to be back on Friday with all the decoration parts that you'll need to make the rest of this work. Have a great week. Don't melt in the sunshine. Make sure you stay hydrated and I will see you on Friday. Bye for now.